My name's Anne from Orchid Systems, and today I'm going to run through EFT processing for Sage Intact for your vendor payments. EFT processing for vendor payments allows you to create an EFT file in the format required for your bank. It is integrated with the Sage Intact payment processing routines, and hundreds of bank formats are already supported, and others can be created on request. So we currently support domestic payment formats, cross-border payment formats, positive pay in North America, the NACHA and CPA 005 standards in Europe and Asia, the CEPA and ISO 2022 formats, the BPAY format, etc. We also support user-definable formats. The EFT banking details for both the vendor and the supplier are all stored in the Sage Intact database. And our EFT file format supports user-definable screen labels and fields to reflect the bank's terminology. First, we're going to install and configure EFT processing. Initially, you download and install the EFT XML file from the ORCIDS website. Then once you've installed it, you can use the EFT menu to enter your license code, to configure the EFT formats that you want to use, to configure your formats for the banks that you are creating EFT files for. And then you would configure your EFT details for all your suppliers in Accounts Payable on the ORCID EFT tab. To download the ORCID EFT application, you need to first go to our website, orchid.systems, and log in as a partner. The product downloads are in the partner area. Then select Sage Intact, and then download the module. And once you download the module, you can then unzip the XML file from the file that you've just downloaded. And this XML file is the file that you would import from Platform Services, Install Applications, and then you would import that particular XML file. Select the file and click Install. And before we go ahead to do the configuration, we should check the other prerequisites after importing the XML file. So in the Help, in the topic importing the XML file, you download and save the XML file, import it, and then you need to make sure you have an Ajax web service user. So you go to the company setup, company from the main Sage Intact menu, and then select the security tab and scroll down to find web service authorizations and make sure you have an Ajax user. After installing the ORCID EFT application, the following role will be created for you. And then you need to go to the relevant users and assign this role to all the users who need access to EFT processing. And you do this by selecting the user editing the user and on the roles tab you would assign the role to that particular user. So here we have assigned the ORCID module to the user Anne. And after assigning the role to the appropriate users you will have ORCID EFT under your applications list and also in your menus and you can drag the ORCID EFT menu to where you want to work with that. And you also have an overview menu. The next thing to do is to enter your activation code in the EFT license screen. You can apply for as many activation codes as you need for all your different company IDs, either demonstration accounts or your customers' accounts or the customers' implementation accounts. Without the activation code, you can still do all the setup, but you cannot generate an EFT file or download an EFT file. All screens in the ORCID EFT application have a help menu and when you click on it you will get more information about the screen. And the help shows you where the company ID displayed on the ORCID EFT license screen comes from 
and it's this which you need to send to ORCID to get an activation code for your uh, demo accounts or your customer's account or your customer's implementation account. The EFT license screen also shows you when this license is due to expire and if there are any updates to the EFT application on the ORCID website, which you may wish to download and re-import through the install application on the platform services menu. You use the EFT format screen to maintain all the different EFT formats that you need for all your different bank accounts. To create a new format, click Add, and then you would paste in the format definition from the text file that we send you. In future, we will have a button here so you can automatically download that bank file from our website. But in the short term, you need to send us the specification that you need from the bank, and then we'll send you the associated format that you can paste in here. And in the meantime, if you go to the knowledge base on our website, you will be able to find the knowledge base article in the Sage Intact area on our website, which has some sample EFT file formats for you to get started. So it tells you how to paste it in, and it's got a few attachments for the Australian ABA, the Canadian CPA 005, the NACHA, and the SEPA or ISO 2022 for European and Asian banks. Once you have the file, you can copy and paste the contents into the EFT file format screen. So this is the CAN CPA 005, and we would paste that across into the ORCID Systems EFT format screen. So you can paste the entire contents into the format box and then set the name equal to the characters in the square brackets for the text and the description from the name in the quotes. In this case, the Canadian CPA standard CPA 005, the 1464 byte format. And because I've already got a CPA 005, I'm just going to call this one underscore demo. And then you'd save that format. And after setting up all the EFT file formats that you'd need, you'd then go and associate the file format with the appropriate bank. The reason why you can have multiple file formats associated with one bank is you may be doing wire transfers, domestic payments, cross-border payments, and positive pay all from the same bank account. So you need to be able to select multiple file formats for a bank account. Once you choose the file format, you would then go ahead and fill in the necessary information for that bank. The little black info, when you slowly mouse over it, shows you the help for those particular fields, and that can be configured in the EFT file format. You can predetermine what the file name is going to be called, and in this case, check the help for the different codes that you can use in your file format name. YYY gives you the year, MM gives you the month, DD gives you the day, and S gives you a serial number. And once you've filled in the bank-specific info for this particular file format, you'd go ahead and save the record. For more information on the EFT banks, you can click on the Help. And this has more information on the fields you can use in the file name and the other fields on that screen. And now you would go and configure the AP vendors or suppliers that you want to pay using this CAN CPA demo file format. So you would select suppliers or vendors from your accounts payable menu select the vendor that is required for that particular format and then on the ORCID EFT tab you would select CAN CPA demo and then fill in the fields that are relevant. And as you can see based on the file format certain validations can happen like the account number needed to be at least three digits and the financial institution ID at least eight characters for this particular file format. So you'd fill in the fields that are made available for depending on the file type that you have chosen and save the record. 
Not only can your EFT file type provide validations on the account number and the branch number length, but it can also give tooltips or help on how the field should be formatted. So for this USA Wells Fargo virtual card payment format, you need to specify the unique number assigned by the bank to this particular vendor. So this would be the uh, merchant ID or virtual card ID for this particular vendor. So these tooltips can be included in the EFT file formats. For more information on the EFT file formats and what you can do with them, you can check the online help and also there's a quick tip video on working with EFT file formats in Sage Intact EFT processing. And these custom fields can be imported along with the vendor's details. Please refer to our website for the quick tip on importing EFT vendors details. And that's it for the configuration of EFT processing for vendor payments. Next we'll look at the transaction processing. How you go ahead to create an EFT file. The steps for creating an AP payment file for EFT processing is first in Sage Intact using the normal payment processing screens you would enter post approve if you need to your payments and advances. And then once those payments have been posted and the advances have been posted you would use the EFT AP payment request screen to select the payments that you want to pay and click generate to generate the EFT file. So the EFT AP payment request shows you all the complete payments for vendors who have been configured for EFT. And then you would go to the EFT file list screen and download the file for the bank. And then using the bank software you would upload the file to the bank's website or application. And then if it has been imported correctly, you'd come back to the EFT file list and confirm the EFT file. And that is the normal processing for creating an EFT file. So let's go ahead and have a look how this works in Intact. EFT processing allows you to select posted payments for vendors that are configured for EFT and bank accounts that are configured for EFT and then format those according to the bank's requirements. So it's only these posted payments where the status is complete. These are the transactions that you'll be able to select for an EFT file. So when I go to ORCID EFT and then go to our EFT AP payment request screen, this is showing me in the date range that is currently entered here, it defaults to the last calendar month, but if you do need to, you can backdate this if you are not up to date with your EFT uh, files. So if we go back to the 1st of November, we will see there's some additional payments here that we can include for the bank. So this EFT AP payment request shows us in your filter based on the dates or the payment method or the currency or the bank code, etc based on your filters it shows you all those payments that have been made to a vendor that is configured for EFT. So if I go and look at this particular Broken Hill Properties account I can see that on the ORCID EFT tab that this particular vendor is configured for the Wells Fargo ACH format. and for a posted payment. So if I drill into this particular payment, we can see it's a posted payment in Sage Intact. And for a bank that has been configured, in this case, for the Wells Fargo ACH file. And this is the Wells Fargo virtual payment file. So for all your vendors who've been configured for EFT, using a bank account that is also configured for EFT using the same file format, you will be able to select these payments 
and then include them in an EFT file. We could select all or we could just select a handful and in this case when I click generate I'm going to end up with three EFT files because I've got three different file formats here. So you'll get a file per bank account and file format that you have selected. And once the file has been created, these three payments will now drop off this list as they are included in a file. So you're only getting those payments which are posted for vendors that are configured, for bank accounts that are configured and that are not in any EFT file. But if I was to select those already included in an EFT file, I would now see those three payments being included today, as well as the past payments that I have together with the EFT file number that they're included in. And now we would go to the EFT file list screen and based on the filters, so I'm only looking at my own files, we see all the files in this particular filtered, filtered range. So here is the three new files that I've just created. The status is new and I can uh, drill in to see the bank details or the format details if I need to. And I can view the contents of the file. So here I would be able to see the bank details that are being included in this file. So this is from the EFT bank record and then this is from the EFT vendor record and payment record. So we can see the details that will be included in this file. And if we're happy with that, then we can just click download. And when I click download, it's going to download that file onto my local drive and call it the name that I, you know, based on the file naming convention I had on the EFT bank. And if I open this up, I will see that it's formatted based on the way Wells Fargo needs this particular transaction or transactions are formatted. So I'd go ahead and upload that into my bank software and if it was successful I would come back here and click confirm. Before I click confirm you'll see the status is currently exported. So when I click confirm the status will become confirmed. So once it's confirmed, I can still view it and with security clearance, I can download again, but there's nothing more I can do with that particular um, EFT file. And that shows you the normal processing when you post your payments, select the payments for an EFT file, generate the file, download it, import it into the bank and then confirm all was okay. Next, we're going to run through what happens if the bank says there's something wrong with the file. For example, you may have had a payment date in the past and most banks would reject that. So what do we do now to go and change that file and how is that all kept track of and how is it audited? In the scenario when you upload the file to the bank, and the bank says there was an error, for example, the payment date was in the past. Or maybe when you're downloading the file, some of the EFT file specification validations are not correct and you might get an error message while the file is being created too. So in either of these cases, what you can do is go ahead in the EFT file list screen and hold the file. Hold means you can now go and change some of the details, maybe the EFT bank details record, maybe the EFT vendor details record, or maybe the effective date if you're using that for your payment file. And then once you've held the file, you would go to amend the EFT bank details, the vendor details, or the payment details for the effective payment date. And then you could go ahead and refresh the file which gives it a new file with all the new details in and the status is new and you can come back and download 
import into the bank and if successful confirm or if there are more errors go through that loop again. So let's see how that works in EFT processing. Going back to our EFT file list and having a look at the two of the other files that we generated earlier, we have got this file that we can view or download, the status is still new, and this file we could view or download, the status is still new. So assuming I go ahead and download this particular file, and when I open the file I notice something's wrong with this file, or perhaps when I upload to the bank I get an error message that the payment date is in the past. So what I can do is come and hold this file. So its status is exported, so once a file has been exported you can come and hold the file. So if I hold this file you'll notice the status now becomes on hold. And at this stage I can refresh the file. But I need to do a change before it can be refreshed. If I click refresh now it says that no data is changed so it won't create a new file for me because it recognizes none of the data has changed. But if I do do a refresh, for example, I change the effective date of this particular file and I know my file format is using effective date, or I go back to my vendor or bank and I change some details. And now when I click refresh, it will make a copy of this existing file with the status of replaced and create me a new file with the status of new with the newly refreshed data. And I can now go and download this and upload to the bank. And it will now have the effective date of the 16th. And assuming it's accepted, I would then come and confirm. But if I view the contents of the file and I see here's my um, ARP file for Wells Fargo and I see I've got my bank details and I've only got one payment but I recognize that I actually wanted to do two payments to the Broken Hill in this particular file, what you can do is delete. And what delete means is this file is still kept we know that it's uh, by the status it becomes deleted we can still view what the payment details were, but that particular payment is back on my EFT AP payment request, so I can select it with other payments. Payment for Broken Hill, the ARP format is back on this list. I could select that one and that one and go ahead and generate a new file with those two transactions in. Generated me one file, those two payment records will drop off this list and on my EFT file list I now have a new file with two payments in and when I go ahead and view it as you'd expect I've got both payment details sitting here. And that wraps up our error handling with the EFT files if the file is rejected by the bank or you get an error message when downloading.